Hello everybody, this is Marie from Skeletorama again. Welcome back to my channel. Come out of house shift. How's everybody doing? Um, so we are back for part three of our journal from start to finish project. In part one, of course, we did our cover. And in part two, we did our pages and we got them put together and got them trimmed up. Um, we trimmed this one up on camera and then I went back and did the other two. So they are nice and trimmed up and ready to go. And they're even on this side and they're all the same height here, as you can see. So we are going to work on adding some texture to these pages. So by texture, what do I mean texture? Well, you can add a little bit of extra interest to things um, with uh, inks and sewing and, and all kinds of stuff. And there are certain ones that you want to do before you start putting the book together because otherwise it makes it rather difficult. And stamping and using stencils are one of those things because it works better when it's flat. Um, and you have a nice hard surface to press against so that you get the best results out of it. So what I did here is I was trying to decide, okay, which inks do I want to use? So I have a ton of them. Um, and I wanted to pick colors that I think kind of go with the project and are going to be, you know, they'll show up enough, but they'll be subtle enough. I don't want to overwhelm it with a bunch of stamping and things like that. I've, I've gone crazy on them before and I don't want to do that this time. So what I did was I took one of my stencils and I tried out a bunch of the different, I picked out the, like the Tim Holtz, this is the Distress, Distress Oxide inks, Ugh. Um, and put them down on here because I kind of wanted to see how do they look on paper. Because as you can see, so this is forest moss right here, right? So you see that? This is kind of different from, from what that package looks like. So, you know, it's, it's, there's always going to be a slight color difference between that and that. That's why they always recommend that you put a color sample on it so you can see. I just haven't gotten around to doing that. But um, it also depends on the paper. So if you're using a tea dyed paper versus regular paper, this is just regular copy paper, scrap paper I had from work stuff that I was doing. Um, so I put it on there just kind of as a tester at first. And, and of course, it'll look a little different. Uh, once we put it on tea stain paper or vintage book pages or what have you, but at least with this stuff, you just start light and you, you go to where you want it. But so when I auditioned all these colors, I settled on a few of them because the forest moss and the peel paint were a bit too on the yellow side. Um, evergreen bow is a bit too blue. So what I went with was bundled sage, which is this one right here and cracked pistachio, which is this nice green right here. And then I did grab some Lucky Clover um, and test that out for a kind of a nice bright green, just so it um, we have, you know, some different tones of stuff. And then with my archival inks, I went with, this is leaf green and, what is that, vivid chartreuse. I always want to call it violence chartreuse because it's just, it's bright, sure, that works. But we have these two here. And then the gold, this is the Delica. So it's done by Sukaneko and, and it's beautiful stuff, but it's very, very, very subtle. So it's super, super, super light. So if you think you're going to print something out, you know, with a rubber stamp and get this color, you got another thing coming, you better have a stamp platform because you're going to have to do it several times to get it dark like that. But it gives a nice subtle highlight to things and a, a bit of sparkle. You could always use a bit of sparkle. So everybody's got their own little applicators here for the Distress Oxides. For the archival inks, I use this. This is um, <clears throat> Ranger Cut and Dry Foam. So it comes in a big sheet like this. It's got a hard foam on the back and it's got a light foam on here. And you can basically kind of cut your own applicators with it. And so generally I just use that with the archival inks because it's it works better and they're going to stain the living heck out of you know whatever foam pad you put them on. And this stuff's a little bit denser than those. so. We have the ones to go with each of those. So along with the different inks, there's another way that you can add texture involving ink, and that's embossing. So with embossing, you have a couple choices. So traditionally you'd use an embossing ink. Um, so Versamark works, Ranger makes one. Most stamp companies that make stamp pads make a version of it. You can get them in pens. I mean, it's really cool stuff. It's really sticky and it has a fairly long drying time. So you don't have to panic and throw the powder on there real quick and you know, go crazy with it. But um, you also need embossing powder. So I have a copper and a gold. So that'd be for some, some little small things. You don't wanna do too much cause you're gonna overwhelm the page. Now let's say I want to use a nice green color but I don't have green embossing powder. Well, that's when you use stuff like this. So I've got the holographic. I also have 
um, clear embossing powder. So you can put this over it and it'll kind of um, give it a bit of a shine and everything while being clear so it'll, it'll maintain the color underneath. But I like to add a little bit of sparkle if I'm going to do that so it really calls attention to it. And then to do embossing, um, I have my powder tool here. This is basically baby powder, honestly, is all it is. Um, but you brush it on your surface, it gets rid of static electricity because this sticks like crazy to static. So especially if you're using a darker color here, if it sticks anywhere it's not supposed to and you heat it and, and melt it because this is essentially a plastic and you melt it on there with your heat gun, which is our other tool here, um, you're really going to see it, right? So this will keep it from sticking to anything except what you want it to stick to. So if you have fine detail stuff like a script stamp or something like that, it's real good to use this powder tool. If you don't have this powder tool, cornstarch and a paintbrush, baby powder and a paintbrush, put it on there. Yes, it's going to have this powdery residue. Once you're done and the embossing powder has cooled and everything, you just wipe it off. Okay, so that is that portion of things. The different stuff you can do with ink. I'm going to scoot these over here. Um, along with the ink, of course, we need something to ink with, right? So I have, let's see, let's throw those over there. I have a mess. That's what I have. I have no desk space. So what else I have? Okay. And we have some different stencils. So stencils you can use for lots of different stuff. I've got this one's a Prima stencil. It is a doily. Um, this one, this is done by the Crafters Workshop. It's one of my favorites. It's called Microbe. It's a good generic all-purpose. Add little dots to things to kind of give stuff some personality. We have, of course, Tim Holtz. I love Tim Holtz so much. You have no idea. Um, he's going to bankrupt me, that dude. But anyway, we have one of his stencils here with the stars. So I love this one. Um, and then, of course, I've got this one here. It's a Tree of Life. I think this came with a card kit from Hero Arts. I'm not sure. And as you can see by all the stuff that's on it, I use this a lot. And I use it with texture paste a lot because with texture paste, if you don't get in there and clean it right away, it ain't going nowhere. So that's how you know it's a well-loved stencil. And although I love this one, it is very finicky, and you'll, you'll see when we go to use it. But it, it can be tricky to use. So we have those. And then, of course, we need some stamps, right? So we have... Oh, surprise, surprise, it's Tim Holtz again, Stampers Anonymous, but they make such wonderful stamps that are perfect for texture that it, it doesn't matter what your theme is, right? So would I use this or this on it? Maybe no, but certainly this or this, it, it just gives you your numbers. It just gives you a little bit of fun kind of, um, you know, text to, to play off of and, and make texture with. So we have that one. We've got this one, so this is a Christmas one, right? Because it says right here, Christmas, so I won't be using that side. But this is music right here, right? And it doesn't have any lyrics, so it doesn't say, you know, fa la la la, whatever. Um, if you read music, it probably is a Christmas carol, and you'd think I was insane. Why are you putting a Christmas carol on there? Like, shh, don't tell anyone, seriously. I can't read music, so to me, that's going to look fine. We have that one. We have this one. This is a ledger script. Can you tell I use this one a lot? Let's see, let's get it out of the stupid light bulb here, which the light bulb is everywhere. But yeah, I use the bejesus out of this thing because it's it's scribbly script and it's it's running over each other, like on this one especially. And, and so it's illegible, but you can still see that it's script. So it looks really cool on things and you'll see. Same with this, this is the um, entomology one. I got it because uh, one of my daughters loves moths and bugs and whatnot and I, I made a special journal for her that's that's nothing but that I've made two I think for her like that and so I got this for that but plus it comes with this awesome script stamp so got that and then we have this one here so I swear to god I hate this light I'm going to punch this light right in its face um so you have some just basic text and different things you know I wouldn't use say gears if I'm doing a steampunk one I'd use the gears I'd use this I'd use the numbers but um, you know, these, these different things can look really, really nice on there. Okay. So we have stamps, we have stencils, we have to move them over here and get them out of the way. Um, in addition to doing the stamping and things where you want it flat, sewing is also another area that you want to do before you put your book together. So not all the sewing, obviously, but any of the sewing on pages. So in this one, for example, if you see here, these pockets, these are sewn in. You see on the back. See, I've sewn those in to make the pockets 
technically you could glue them in, but I, I really wouldn't trust them um, glued in, honestly, because it's, it's just, it's not going to want to stay once you're putting stuff in. It's not going to hold up as well as it will with this. Um, and then, of course, the scrapbook paper pages, and we're going to do ones like this where we've cut it and made pockets. You see how it's sewn around there. These I'm going to show you guys how to do probably in the next video. I'll do a little one by itself with these because it'll it'll take a minute. But um, these are a really fun way to add texture to. But they're they're done separately from the book. So and see, I've got another set of pockets here. I don't always put tons of pockets. I'll usually do one set of fabric pockets per signature. Um, I like to do a belly band, but with the, it's the one that comes across this way and you stick stuff in it. But with the fabric, it just doesn't seem to hold stuff in it very well and it's super annoying so I've, I've gone back to doing those with paper but anyway so that's what we're going to do with those so I have some fabrics here I have this one this is so pretty so pretty this is the Stonehenge one this is all I have left um, I do have a much larger piece that is slated for a quilt that I'm working on and then I can have the scraps once I'm done to hopefully motivate myself to get the quilt done faster but it's been like three years four years. I don't know. I, I don't see me doing that very quickly, but one of these days I'll get it done. But in the meantime, I do have that scrap there. And then of course this fabric here that we used for the cover. So there's, there's a good amount of this left. So we can use some of that for pockets. It'll look really cute on the inside. And then I have my scrap pile. So I am such an idiot. Um, I was looking high and low for the scraps from when we made the cover. And I remember saying in the video, hey, make sure you hang on to these. We can use these, right? And everywhere. Yeah, I actually put them away. <laughs> so I couldn't find them. They were, they're right here in the front. So um, I have my scrap pile here. And there's some things that, you know, may or may not work with it. It's usually, this is going to be, you know, for different things that are smaller that we're going to do, not pockets, because these are too small. Sometimes I'll have scraps that are that size. But there's a lot of things that will go with it. You know, I have some different green ones here and some plain ones. Um, this is very Scottish. This is a black watch tartan and then of course we have the Stuart tartan. Um, they did have tartans and still do in Ireland but it's just they're they're more associated with Scotland so I try to avoid crossing the two because I do know the difference between those two places but I have this. This is really cool. This is a Tim Holtz fabric. You know, and I do have a larger piece of this as well, so this may be something that I go fish out of my um, quilting fabric. But anyways, tons of scraps. So we'll use those along with it um, to do our pockets and things. So I'm going to straighten some stuff up and I shall be right back with you and we will get started deciding where we're going to put things um, and getting some texture in there. So we're probably going to decide on the pockets first and where we want them before we start stamping the crap out of everything. So anyways, I'll join you back in a second. Okay, so I am back now um, and I've straightened my mess a little bit. Um, and so now we are going to first decide where we want to put our um, sewn in pages, okay? So let's take our pages out of here. We'll put this back. Oh, and we'll get foam everywhere. Okay. So what we're going to do is probably with this, I would say one fabric page, um, fabric pocket page per signature should be fine because we have a lot of pages in here that I really like the design of. So I obviously don't want to go crazy covering them up with fabric. So um, let's take a look and see where we want to put them. So in here, you're not going to want to put a fabric page, say, on this because this is rather thin. But we do want to find a page that's that's fairly plain. I, I usually use like the tea stain pages or some other kind of plain page. On this one, yes, we could put it here. I mean, this side's not so bad, but we're going to do something different with this to kind of cover this one up. Um, don't want to cover the music page. What else do we have? So yeah, it's looking like our contender is going to be the tea stain paper. So where do we want it? Well, we've got a pocket here. So let's go farther in the front. So let's stick with this first one here. Okay. So I'm going to take this out. Whenever I do anything in here, I take them out separately and put one on top of the other so I can, I don't know, find it again. And we have our fabric. So which fabric do we want to use? Well, this was on our cover. So we know we've seen this. So let's see how much of this we can use for our pockets. You can take your page here and lay it out flat and we are going to hold our material up to it and we're just going to see, okay, so I could probably get two pages 
worth of pockets out of this one piece here. So that's what we will shoot for, okay? So now when we are cutting this, get my smaller scissors out, I like the texture of the, the jagged edges here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snip here, and then I'm gonna tear this. Now it's gonna go kind of weird here, but that's okay. And this is, again, very nerve wracking, but I've already torn it here, so I know this is a straight edge. And this will catch your straightest edge that you have. And there we go, see, check that out. Love it. And you're gonna end up with, of course, all these strings here, you just pull them off. Um, because that's what's going to give you your ragged edge anyway, okay? And so since we can probably get two out of this, go ahead and pull some of these guys off here so this edge looks pretty. I can do this all day. Okay, stop. Seriously. All right, we're going to go ahead and tear this in half this way as well. So let's go to this end and about halfway. Maybe fairly shallow pockets, but that's okay. And we're going to tear it again. See? Isn't that crazy how that'll do it just right along that the threads? And Gail Augustinelli is the one who I saw do this the first time. And, and yeah, the first time I went to do it, I was just like terrified, thinking I was going to destroy it. It was going to rip weird or wasn't going to do it the way she did it. And nope, it did it, it, it just like clockwork. So let's get our extra strings off of there. Okay, so now we've got two of these. And kind of flatten them out. They'll flatten out when we sew them. And so when we put them on here, we're looking at maybe, I don't know, let's do this side here. About here. And we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to go whoop, and pull some more off of that. That goes in the scrap pile. So this should fit on here nicely. And again, it's just going to be a shallow pocket. So we're not going to want to put any big, huge things in there, but you can put small stuff in. Okay. And then what I do, since I'm going to be doing my stamping and, and all that stuff first, I'm just going to paper clip these in. So I have my handy dandy paper clips over there and put these in here just so I know that that's, that's what's going over here. So when I'm doing my stamping, obviously I'll take this off so that way we can have some stuff that kind of appears from underneath it or what have you, but we know where it's going to go. Okay, so let's put this in here. And so since we're going to do two of this, that means we'll do one of the other one because I have to have my balance. So let's put that in there and we'll sit this up there and we'll do our next one. And it's probably going to go in the same spot because our scrap of paper is in the same spot. So we will just go ahead and do it that way from the beginning, shall we? All right. So same with this. We're going to lay this out flat. See about how long we want it. Just go a little bit farther than you think you're going to need, just because you can always take material off, but you can't add it back. And that goes in the scraps. And there we go. Pull this thread off of here. And so when you have these nice ragged edges, they give a lot of texture. And, and once you sew it in, I mean, this isn't going to go fraying on you in perpetuum. You know, if you're afraid of that, you can always use fray check on it and that'll, that'll stop it. But it's, it's also going to make your edge really weird. So I, I wouldn't necessarily advise that. It'll be fine. So we will do this like this. And seriously, paperclip is here. And we will put this back in the signature here. Let it lives. And set this one off to the side. And we'll do the same with this. So this one, again, we're going to go in the same spot. Um, and when you do it like this, where you're going over a span of a specific page, it also helps keep everything balanced throughout the journal, which is another Gale trick that has been extremely useful for me. So, okay, we have this one here. So we'll do a little bit deeper of a pocket on this because we've got, you know, a little bit more fabric here to work with, obviously, right? So I have not torn this one yet. So the first tear may be um, a little wonky. So that's why I'll do more than I need. So let's go about yay high here. And same thing. And you can do it long ways. You can do it across. Doesn't matter. It still goes nice and straight. So there we are. And see, since this was not cut, obviously, exactly straight following the, um, you know, the threads, it's, it's way different from here to here. So we'll go about here. 
Now with this, when you're tearing it, if you go too thin, all it's going to do is just tear that little chunk off. So you do, do want to go good, like at least a quarter of an inch to keep it from doing that. And then again, this can be used in the tassels. So let's see if you can see the tassels. That's what some of the stuff is in there, is the fabric strips that came off. So that goes in the scrap pile. And now we've got a lot more even of a piece, see? Because it's following the threads and the threads are evenly spaced. So we'll do the same with this one. We're gonna lay it here and go just a little farther than we need to. And we're gonna tear that, okay? Ta-da! And then go ahead and remove your excess threads now because they will get in your way otherwise. And super annoying to have that. And if it starts pulling down farther than you want it to, obviously just take your scissors and go boop. And this, I'll just take this clump because I don't want to sit here all day with that one. I'll do that one later off camera. But all right, so we have this pocket here too. Okay, we're going to do all the sewing at the end just because some of the pages that we sew on we're going to want to put stamping and whatnot on and you don't want to have your your stitches getting in your way of that either so there we are so we have all of our pockets decided for our sewing so we will put it back in its little place that it lives we're going to start thinking about our stamping now okay all right so let's get the I love this. This is the cutest thing in the world. See, look, it's a little ghost. Oh, I love that. It's Le Creuset. They came out with it at Halloween. It's just the cutest thing ever. All right. So now we're going to think about doing our stencils first because you can do stencils and stamping, but you would want to do the stencils first. So, and we're not going to go super crazy. So let's take a look. Um, we'll do it from the front to the center because, again, we're going to mirror it on the, the opposite side of it. Let's take a look through here at some potential spots. This is always a good spot to do some kind of stenciling. So with this, this is, you know, like here, this would be a good place to do maybe this so that it's on both and it's just kind of peeking out. You still have room, you can decorate, you can put all sorts of things there, but you've got kind of a pattern that goes over. Or we can do the doily. Uh, we do have a doily in here, so if we do that, we don't want to go kind of too close to it or it'll be too doilyified. So let's start with that one. Might as well. And what I'm going to do is I'll do one of the, the signatures. I'm not going to do all three of them because that would just take forever and a year. We'll just do the one. Um, you know what? Let's, let's have fun. We'll do it with the gold. That'll be interesting. Okay, this particular stencil is very finicky because you see all these pointy bits. So you have to be real careful how you do it so you don't go over the lines with it. Get this out of the way here. I'm just forever moving everything everywhere. All right, so I've got this. I've got my little cut and dry foam. And I'm just gonna kind of dab it in here. And I'm gonna line this up so it's more or less in the center. I'm gonna start from the outside. I'm just gonna kind of dab down on it because if you try to do the circles with this too much, depending on where you are on the stencil, it's gonna go bloop and you're not gonna get what you want. So with this one, I just pay real close attention to where those little pieces are like here. And then I make sure to go in the direction of them. So I'm kind of pushing them down as I go. So they're not, um, see how that one moved all over the place. Like I said, this is real finicky. So with these, I may actually just <clears throat> speed it up while I do it. Cause this is going to take a minute. So as you can see, that thing is super fussy, which is why 
I love it, but I don't use it as much as I'd like to because it's just, it's such a headache whenever I do. I feel like I have arthritis now from that. But um, see how that's nice, subtle? If you can see pretty well, see the shimmer on that. Now at this point, this is a pigment ink here. Pigment inks are also very nice to do embossing with. So if we wanted to, we could take that clear powder and, and put it on there and emboss this as well. I'm not going to, but it's totally an option. And I also forgot to show you, I have this stamp here. And this is another Tree of Life stamp. I have a bit of a Tree of Life thing. It's, it's one of my favorite symbols, but um, we've done this big one here. We can also do maybe a small one there or one up here. And maybe a little too much, but so let's get our thing back and put this back in here and see now when you see it it's going to kind of peak you're getting half of it and it's adding a subtle texture to it but not not too much right so where else could we do some stenciling so we're not going to want to do it over this necessarily so again here we got another plain page and yes it's the one we did our pockets but it's still it's still plain on the other side so we'll take our fabric off of here because obviously we want this to be flat. We're going to turn this over and do something on this side, I think. So let's do, how about we do the microbe one and we use bundled sage. That was pretty, pretty mellow color. So with this, so you've got these harsh, you know, that's not super harsh, but you've got a round pattern. We don't want the round pattern, right? So we're going to put it kind of over the edge a little bit and we just want to take and use some of the, um, center stuff here. You just kind of do our own sort of stuff in the center and moving out to the edges. See? That just adds a nice little layer of interest to things and and again because I'm a psychopath and have to have balance and everything I'm going to do the same on this side just so it's it's similar. You don't want to go too heavy with it because you don't want it to jump out. You just kind of want it to add a layer of interest to it. Okay, so that'll work for that. And then on our other side here, we have our pocket here. So we can have something coming out of that. So we will pick a different color. And let's do, let's do the violent chartreuse over here. I know that's not its name, but I like calling it that. And with these, we can have these kind of peeking up and coming out of the pocket like this, too. So let's put our pocket here. We're just going to kind of hold this here. And then we take our pocket away so we know where to leave this. And this one I use the ranger stuff on. This is not as finicky. This I can do the little circles, and it's, it's going to be just fine. You know, it's, it's that other stencil which I absolutely love, but man, it's, it's a big pain in the butt. But in order to have that detail, you know, it has to have those pieces cut. So really not much of a choice. And you can always pull this up and look and see how it's super subtle in there. Um, I don't have any stencils that are specifically, say, um, Irish style designs. And, you know, with the stamps and stencils, it's unfortunate, but, um, you know, again, that's, they seem to think that the only thing Irish is St. Patrick's Day, and mm -hmm. there's so much more to it. I mean, sometimes you can find the, the Celtic knotwork stuff, but that's about it. And, you know, if you're Scottish, forget it. Um, every time you look for stuff that's Scottish, you get Scotty dogs. You're like, really? That's, that's the best y'all could do, seriously. But um, here we go. So see, we've just got this very light, subtle pattern, and then it'll be coming kind of out of here. So we'll do the same on that. Um, if you are going to do that and you want to reverse your stencil, then make sure you wipe this off a little bit first. You'll want to wipe it off better than I'm doing, obviously, but let me flip it over and use back side. You're not, obviously you don't have to use it from its quote unquote front side. Use whatever side you want. And now with this, if we wanted this to be a little more obvious, you know, we could have used a darker color or what have you, but you know, I like to keep it where you have the texture and the visual interest, but it's not punching you in the throat, you know? Um, it's, it's really easy to overdo this stuff. So very easy. I know I've done it. Um, 
you know, because you just get all stencil happy. And next thing you know, every page has got stencils. And, and then I go to stamp, and I'm like, I don't have anywhere to stamp without it looking weird, you know. Or, hey, I wanted to put this design element there, but I've stamped it over there, and so I really can't now. And you'll lock yourself into some stuff. So, you know, it's best to use a, a light hand with those sorts of things. Okay, so there we go. And now this archival ink is permanent. Um, just keep in mind your distress oxides are water reactive, but we're going to use that to our advantage here in a minute. So I want to try something interesting. So let's go ahead and put this back on here. And we will get this back in the signature. And we will find our next victim. I mean page that needs things. Do, do, do. And again, right now we're just doing some light stenciling and we will go back through and look at places to do stamping. So of course these have plenty of texture. We don't really want to mess with those. And here we have our tea stain paper again. So let's see, what have we not used? We haven't used the doily one. So let's do the doily one on this. So again, you have you know, a choice. You can do it in the center where it's gonna come through both. You do it on the corners. It just kind of depends on what you think you're gonna be doing with it later. We'll probably have some pockets and things here. So with this, maybe we'll do it up at the top to where it's kind of centered between the two. And we will do a darker color. So let's grab the cracked pistachio, I think, for this one. And the nice thing is when I design the kits, I try to design the colors so that they make sense um, for you. And so you can kind of pick a, a color scheme of inks and things if you want to do this. And, and it's really easy to blend with stuff. It's not all over the place, <clears throat> which things tend to be sometimes. All right. And if you ever do that where you move your stencil, just kind of look at it and look where it is and and you can usually line it back up pretty easy she says while not lining it up very easy at all but and as you can see the the distress oxides are a little more opaque so we're gonna do this and here get this all filled in some people like to put um temporary adhesive spray on the back to keep from what i'm going through here generally if you're doing stenciling on your own it's you're not going to move it as much but when you're doing it with a camera yeah it tends to move a little bit all right so we've got that there um, and then of course like i said once we have it in the signature it's just a subtle bit up here and then if we put a pocket down here then it kind of makes sense so what else can we do with this oh we can do the back side of it what do we have on the back I'll go back to these, I think. Yeah, we'll do these down the center. Why not? We'll do this with the Lucky Clover. We'll pick another color in our little color palette. And so this, I'm going to move this up so I can start doing a band down the center. And I don't get any of the edges in there that kind of gives the game away. And then you can do as much or as little as you want. With this, just the circular motions are, are probably the best because it'll really get in there and, and work everything. And then I'm going to move down here and I'm going to try to keep where I can see where I've already gotten and to try to avoid, you know, doubling them up. And that section in the middle is going to be nice and dark. Oops. Okay, so there we go. And again, the oxides are water reactive. So you can do interesting things if you have a water sprayer, which I do somewhere, there it is. We can take this little dispress sprayer and do like a nice little light mist on it. We're gonna let that sit and dry for a minute. Um, obviously it's gonna get your paper wet, but it's gonna take that ink and kind of move it around and add some little water spots to it and things like that. So this one we're gonna leave to the side, let it dry for a minute. Let's see what else do we have in here, anything else? These are already super loud. Okay, we got one more, and I think we're gonna save this to do some different stamping on. Because again, it's, it's real easy to over um, stencil things to the point of ridiculousness, so we don't want that. Okay, so now that we've got those, we can clear away 
these top heavy daubers that just drive me bug nutty. Okay, and let's look at doing some stamping. With the stamping, that's probably where we're gonna be embossing. So I need to leave these separate again for that. So we're gonna do this here. Um, we'll put that like that, put this like this. Hopefully I'll remember where everything goes. Um, so this side's kind of textured enough. I don't think we really need anything on there, but this side we still have some, some room to play. So with that, like I said, it'd be kind of cool to do the tree of life, but it'd be a little too matchy-matchy and weird. So let's do just some text. I'll grab one of our text stamps here. We'll use that one. And then with this, we're going to use one of the darker colors with it so that it's, it's not blending in again too much with that. So we'll use this darker leaf green here. So you can put it on a stamp block. So if you want to get this whole thing nice and pressed down, you know, exact the way it is, that's when you're going to want to use a stamp block. But if you want to just be able to kind of mush it around where you want it and add it where you want, um, that's why I normally just use it like this. Okay, so we're going to do this here. And I should probably, let's get a scrap piece of paper. It's always a good idea too. So you can just make sure that it's not, not what you want, right? So here, we'll do this side. And with the script stamps, you can do whatever you like, but make sure that your script is the right way up. Otherwise it'll look weird. So with this, I'll do it this way here. So we're going to get this stuff nice and inked up here. And then I think maybe just at the corners. And just press a little bit with your hand. And see, you're just leaving a little spot of it. It's very subtle. You're not overpowering it. You know, it almost looks like the grass, kind of, except the grass is, is text. Kind of what I'm going for. Okay. And then we'll do a little bit right there and kind of fill these bottom parts in. Let's see, where did I have ink? There we go. Okay, so that's probably as much as I would do to that. So again, you've got your tree, which is very subtle. You have this, which is very subtle. And again, it almost looks like the grass that the tree's growing in. And then once you put it in here with this, see, it's even more subtle, okay? So we got that. Let's take a look at any other pages. Now here's where you can start doing stuff with these pages if you like. Um, if they have a, a bit of white space to them, you can add things to it. I'm probably not going to with that, but with this I will. So we'll put that up there. Take this out again, and we can just kind of move this down if we need to. So with this, let's go back here on this side. What do I want to do? This might be a good spot to put the Tree of Life one. And we will do that in the gold again so it's nice and subtle. And you know what? Let's go ahead and emboss that. Why not? Just for fun. Just so I can do like all the things in the video. And I actually did take the precaution of plugging my gun in, which normally I forget. I am back. The piece of paper that I was missing is this in order to do the um, embossing powder and catch the embossing powder that's that's extra, get it back in the jar. Piece of paper, fold it in half is all you need. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to do the tree, I think, up here with all this texture stuff. Now there is a tear in this. Once we um, put the pages in and, and go to start decorating, I'm gonna probably cover this with washi tape on the side and it'll cover part of the tree, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. So, we want our powder tool and let's see let's use we we'll use the gold on that one okay so we've done our stenciling on here right again inks can stay wet longer than you think and embossing powder loves to stick to ink so the first thing you want to do if it's an area that you have just recently stamped on is take your embossing powder and put it on here see if any of it sticks if it sticks, it means it's still too wet for you to do anything to. Okay, see how it didn't stick? It stuck a little tiny bit, but that's more the static. Um, because again, the embossing powder will stick to any kind of static, the oils from your fingers, 
stuff like that. Okay, and if you have this like this, you can just go boop. You're still going to get it everywhere. I mean, that's just the way it is, but um, the key is always make sure you put your lid on here good <laughs> between steps because I cannot tell you how many times I've knocked these damn things over. Okay, so we've got our thing here and we are going to do one side at a time. Um, I'll do one side and then when I go to do the heat gun, I will speed it up. I'll do the other side and then we'll, we'll come back after that happens. Okay, so I've got my Versamark ink here. This is an embossing ink and my little stamp. And you're going to get it nice and saturated. And you can kind of see it a little bit. Okay, press down and I'm going to press down and hold just for a second just to do maximum transfer of the ink. I'll let that sit there. Take this over here. I'm going to take my embossing powder and I'm going to sprinkle it all over. And I'm going to shake this off. And I forgot to do my powder, so that's actually probably a good thing because I can show you what will happen if you get extra. But there we have the embossing powder is stuck to the design. And then whenever I watch Artie Mays and she does this, she'll leave this stuff on here and it just... I'm always terrified for her that she's going to knock it over. <laughs> I don't know if you guys do that or not too, but you're watching somebody craft and you're like, oh my God, put the lid on that. You're making me anxious. Okay, so if you're an idiot like me and you forgot to use the powder for it um, and you notice that there's any bits that are where they shouldn't be, just kind of hold it up to light. Take a paintbrush and just kind of brush them off. So I do have a couple little spots in here. Um, be careful little brush the design off like I just did But so we'll just leave it at that. Okay, so I am going to definitely Fast forward through this part because I don't think you want to hear a heat gun And if you do you, you may have some issues and we can we can talk about that later But right now we're gonna go ahead and melt the embossing powder because it looks really cool Okay, so there we have it. Um, we have our embossing on there and, and you can tell obviously when it's done because again, it'll, it'll really change consistency. Um, so whenever I do embossing, cause I do a lot of card making too, um, I'll take it and I'll hold it up to the light to see if there's any spots that look dull and different from the shiny part. And that's how you know you've missed a spot and you can go back over it with the heat gun. So since I use the, um, powder on that one that means there's a little powder residue whether I can see it or not so I just take a microfiber cloth and just kind of wipe it gently and it'll take that powder right off but it's not going to hurt anything um, and then the part I did not mention is stamps clean your stamps please um, they last so much longer if you do that so this is a stamp chamois it's from um, Lawn Fawn and you just get it wet and and you wipe it off and clean it I've also got the um, where'd it go? Where'd it go? I have a stamp cleaner like this. And this cleaner here, you just take it and see how this has a lot of residue because I've used a lot of metallics on it. Take that and then you just scrub, 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 scrub. And then I take the microfiber cloth and I kind of dry it off. And it'll get most of that stuff off of there. But your stamps will last much, much longer if you just take that couple seconds to take care of them. And if you have like my Tim Holtz stamps here, where they start getting all grungy on the back, it will make them difficult to get them to stick to your stamping blocks sometimes. <clears throat> so just wash them with, with hot water, a little tiny bit of, of soap on the back, and it'll make this stuff back to its, its original clingy self. So, okay, so we've got that embossed on there. And see, it's nice and subtle, um, and it looks real cute in there with the green. It's not gonna get in the way of anything else. You've got plenty of space to write. You know, and that's the thing you kind of have to keep in mind when you're doing this, when you're doing any of the stamping or the decorating or putting pockets. 
is what are you or the recipient going to do with this, right? So I cannot tell you how many times I've given these to people and the, the response is almost always, it's so pretty, um, I don't want to ruin it by writing in it. It's like, but that's why I gave it to you, is for you to write in it, um, is what it is there. So, you know, uh, a good thing to use it for, that's what's going on here. Let's put you there because, yeah, now it's, you have the pockets and the doily is a bit much. And I may still rearrange these a bit before we're done, but, um, you know, you, you can use these for a lot of things. So if you have somebody that you know is going to be afraid to write in it, um, add more pockets then and places for them to tuck things to give them alternatives so they can write it on a different piece of paper and just tuck it in. Um, or family history things, you know, if you want to do um, family memories and stuff, you're going to do more blank pages, but then do more pockets so they can tuck in pictures or, or what have you. Um, my mom is real bad about this. I've made several for her and she's always saying that she doesn't want to write in. They're too pretty. They're too pretty. And, um, you know, so I told her, well, get a separate piece of paper then, write on it and, and stick it down with washi tape. I mean, there's, there's a million ways you can do that. And these have gotten out of order, I think, a bit for me. I don't know. Oh, that's why. Okay. I was like wondering, it's like I wouldn't have put two pages like that together, but oh, I'm missing our buddy here that we did the, the stamping to. Okay. Now my world makes sense again. Yes. So I keep these like this so that I know where everything goes. Okay, so we have that. This we're going to decorate, just not with stamps and things. We have that. It's nice and subtle texture. Again, you know, you don't want to go crazy with it. Um, with this, since this is next to this now, and the pocket, um, I went ahead and moved the doily just because it's a little too much. But it looks really nice here because it pairs nice with the tree. So it's, it's a work in progress until you sew your signatures in, in which case, yeah, you're kind of stuck. All right, so we've got this blank page here that, you know, I just put back in, but I'm going to take back out because I'm a rebel that way. Okay, so let's do some stamping on here as well. And again, keep in mind that we want to leave space um, to decorate with things. So if you're going to have somebody who's more of a heavy writer in the journal, stick your decoration up towards the top so they can write. Um, and you can have pockets and different things down here for them to tuck stuff into. Um, you know, if you're not going to have a lot of pockets, then go down kind of in this corner because when we go to decorate with the pockets, that's when you're going to be like, God, I wish I hadn't stamped there. What the hell was I thinking? Or you can do very subtle stamping over the whole thing, which is what we're going to do on this one. So let's get, we we'll use this. I was going to use the music notes, then I realized there's music paper right next to it. So that would be kind of weird looking. So let's take our stamp here with the little tiny small text and in order to keep it nice and um, subtle we're going to use the gold again because the gold is, is very very subtle on there so I'm going to do the same sort of thing just going to ink up this part and just kind of go here and there around it in random spots to add that texture to it making sure that my, my script is right side up because if you if you stamp it upside down, even though it's very subtle stuff, it will still kind of pull at your eye and it'll, it'll look like something's weird and something's off, but you won't know what. And it'll, it'll drive you crazy. So, okay. So see, that's very, very, very subtle. But when you look at it in person, it's, it's adding a little bit of depth and texture to it. So like when I do these pages, um, even the blank ones, let me find a blank, blank one. I think the center one has a no nope, it's got lines okay see that this isn't just flat color I mean I have lots of things under these um, as layers that are done in such a way as it's adding texture to it but it's not overwhelming it so you can't see what it is like this is a map of Dublin under here you know and you can see very subtle text under her with this um, particular journal every single page so you've got the harp very lightly there. Every single page has the 1916 proclamation in it as a texture layer because that's a very important document um, to a lot of people, myself included, um, even though I don't live there. 
you know, I do have opinions, but I'm not going to espouse them here because I don't live there. Although if you are from Ireland and you want to talk about the U.S., I feel free. Man, it's a dumpster fire right now. So there's lots to talk about, but um, I just I don't feel that would be correct. But it is under there. So these little subtle layers that you have under here, even though they're not crazy and you can't see them, you know, they don't jump out at you. They're not supposed to. They're just supposed to kind of add a little bit of visual interest. So they're going to be under stuff. You know, it's like when you do uh, mixed media artwork, you have to realize that you're probably going to lose a lot of stuff. It's going to be hidden that you've spent all this time on, and you have to be okay with that because it's going to add to the overall texture of the piece. You may only see, you know, you may put this cool effect on there and you only see one little tiny piece poking out, but that's the piece you needed. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to use this one on there. Even though it's, you know, subtle text, I don't want to use the same one on back and front because, you know, why would I do that? So we will ink this up here. And you will get ink all over the place. It's just, it's how it works. We have a lot more space here, so let's push that down a little bit more. And again, I know that with this particular gold, it's going to be very, very, very subtle. And like I said, you know, when you, when you stamp this, if you think you're getting that, you're, nope. You're not. You kind of are, but it's very, very light. In order to get that dark, you really have to use a stamping platform. And even then, you know, it'll only do so much. You just kind of pick random spots in there. You don't want to cover the whole thing, but you don't want to, you know, leave too much of it blank. So there we go. That works for that. Oops, yeah, let me go ahead and put the Versamark on as a cover, idiot. All right, so that page is good. The pigment inks with the metallics really will jack these stamps up in a hurry, so I try to try to clean them off pretty quick. But I end up having to, you know, every few times I use it, I I just take it over the sink and clean it off because otherwise, see, it's all over that. It'll be all over my hands, just everywhere. Okay, so here we go. We have our nice little subtle patterns under there because again, we've got. Music notes here, we've got busy here, so we don't want to go over the top with busy. So this one is, is a little different because this is a little bit plainer, that's a little bit plainer, so we can do some of the text in color on this one because we haven't done anything else to this. So let's see, do I want to use a different one? Uh, yeah, maybe I'll use the music on this one, why not? That's the hardest part is just deciding, especially if you have a lot of stamps, and this is not all of the text stamps that I have. I didn't want to go super insane with it, but let's do a darker color on this. So with music, God only knows which way is the right side up, right? Because I don't read music. I'm lucky because these have numbers <laughs> on it, so I can use the numbers to figure out which side up I want to be. But um, so with Distress Oxides and Distress Ink, you can stamp with them. It's just not, it doesn't always work out quite right. Sometimes it's, it's a little too subtle or what have you. So um, I tend to avoid stamping with the, the Distress Oxides as much if I, if I want fine details. So we're going to use this color. We haven't really used this color much. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to get a portion of it here. And then we'll just kind of go in the bottom center here. So we're getting both pages at once. And when you do it this way, you can like kind of vary your pressure so that it's sort of leads off on its own and you don't have the, the sharp edges necessarily on it. And then I'll do some at the top, make it kind of a border. You know, again, it's just whatever you want to do with it and, and, and your own personal tastes and, and whatnot. And there's no wrong way to do it as long as you like it. I mean, if, if you think it sucks, then yeah, that, that was the wrong way to do it. But um, as long as you like it, it's fine. You know, with these things, I mean, you're, you're making a piece of art and art's very subjective. So some people will like it, some people won't like it. And if you like it and they don't like it, well, who the hell cares what they think? All right, let's do this little teeny one again. Um, I think I want to do this one kind of in the center. So I think I'll go down the center of the stamp. Let's see how this works. And hey, you know what? If it comes out and it sucks, then get another piece of paper and just pretend it never happened. We end up having to do that with work stuff every once in a while. It's like, let's just pretend this, this thing we did just didn't happen because this was just a wreck. 
Okay, so there we go. We have some nice subtle stuff in here. Mm, we can do a little bit on the edge, why not? We'll live a little, shall we? We'll just do, because it's got this stuff that's running down that way. Just kind of put that on there a little bit. Because again, we're going to decorate the heck out of these things. We're going to tart them up like crazy. So, And since this is long ways, as long as I don't get too much of that other text, I can probably sneak it onto here without it looking weird. So, Yeah, see these things will only get like one real good stamp out of them and then the second generation isn't always good unless you don't want it to do that and you want the second generation stamp to be light, in which case it comes out just dark because I, I I think they're out to get me. Yeah, sure. I may have problems, but all right. Swipe these guys off. Get these over here to the side out of the way. I'm going to have just like this graveyard of stamps over here to the side, but it's okay. I'm used to that. I do have to clean them up between every activity. I do like clean the whole desk off because I just can't handle working in a big old mess. All right. So you went here. Right. You were like this. You were like this. Okay. So see, we have just kind of the subtle text is kind of creeping out, kind of creeping out here. You can still write over this just fine. Um, and if, you, especially if you have somebody who's going to write in the journal, you know, make sure you you leave them some room because it's, you know, the tendency is to just make everything super pretty and and decorated and then not remember what it's actually going to be used for. So that, that is a problem to watch for when you make these. All right, so I am going to straighten up this whole ink mess um, that I have going on here because we're going to need to sew. And so that means I've got to bring the sewing machine over. And so I need room for that. And we'll see if I can get the camera set up so that you can see what I'm actually doing. That'll, that'll be a challenge. So wish me luck and I will be back with you guys in just a few minutes. Okay, so here we are. I've got the sewing machine set up and I had to set it up on the drawer kind of next to me. So hopefully I won't knock this thing too hard. I've already done it once. Um, so this way you can at least sort of see what I'm doing. So I've taken the liberty of taking the two pages out of one of the signatures that we're gonna sew. So the first one being, oh, and I've got my, put down. Um, it's this one here, the scrapbook one, where it's where it's attached. The only difference when you go to do the one where we've cut is it's cut, so you're just going to have to hold it and, and stitch around. You're still going to cut the same V, but you're going to leave yourself some room at the bottom. Um, and so we're just going to kind of go around the edges of this. And I tend to do the entire edge all the way around, just so it looks a little more um, cohesive, I guess. It, it doesn't like stop abruptly. It's okay on the other one if it does, but I don't like it as much on the scrapbook one if it does. So we're gonna do that first. So I've got it on a zigzag stitch and the stitch, let's see, that's the stitch width is at about a three and the length is about a two. Um, you know, and, and if it's your first time doing this and you kind of want to see, just get a scrap piece of paper and, and test it out on different widths and stitch lengths. You don't want to go too insane because unlike cloth, this will perforate a hole and it will not close itself up. So similar to leather, you have to be real careful when you sew with leather, aside from having a leather needle to do it um, and a really burly sewing machine. You, If you poke a hole in it, the hole's not going anywhere. So you have to make sure you don't have your stitches too tight or too close because then you're just going to perforate your paper. You're not really going to sew it. Um, you're going to actually take strength away from it. So what I normally do with these is I start at the bottom and I give myself about a quarter inch of a, a seam allowance kind of thing ish. Um, well, no, actually. So on here, I've got the opening. I'm going to stick to kind of the edge of the opening for it. So it's more like an eighth inch seam allowance. I mean, we're not really seaming things, but and I start kind of down towards the bottom in whatever color, you know, it doesn't matter. And I start with a back stitch. And that way you're going to add some strength to it. And then you just go forward. You're just going to go all the way around. Super exciting. Um, it's a little weird at first and you think, okay, am I going to have to do anything extra in order to 
to sew with paper on here? No, you don't, um, because it's it's a heck of a lot easier for your machine to get through than cloth. So usually it doesn't cause any problems with it. Um, just don't go too thick on the paper. So like if you're doing the little notebooks and stuff, then um, you know you want to uh, you don't want to go too thick. Otherwise you're going to have you know problems with the needle getting through and it, it will throw a fit. One thing I did forget is whenever I do stuff with the paper and I have to turn corners, I have it so that my needle's default position when I stop is down. So I forgot to do that part, but that's what I just did just now. And when I get to the corner, I'm going to go kind of slow because what I want is, and, and some people do it one way, some people do it the other way. It depends on how you want your corner to look. I like my corners to be solid versus open. So I'm going to stop with my needle at the right hand side of that zigzag stitch. So I lift my presser foot and there we go. This, this ought to be interesting. Get it under the camera, so sorry. Okay, so put your presser foot back down and then continue on your merry way. And yeah, I'll have to find a better way to do this because the camera is way too close to me keep smacking into it. So my apologies for any throwing up anyone has to do because I know that makes me rather motion sick when people do that. Okay, so we are on the right hand side there. So we're going to bring it around. This time we're going to bring it around under the can. Oh yeah, yeah, it worked. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I'll have a better setup for the next one, but Hey, at least the nice thing on the other pockets, you know, I'll have to go around the, the pockets themselves, so there's less chance of me smacking into the camera that way. So, here we go, la la la. Round and round and round. And then we get to the corner and then slow down. If you're real nervous about it, you can always, on the side, you have that that piece, you can hand crank this. Um, just depends on how comfortable you are sewing. I've been sewing for a really long time, so I'm fairly comfortable with it. Just not with a camera next to me. Okay, oh, huzzah, look, I didn't, I didn't knock it too bad that time, but of course it's gonna run into my computer, so this ought to be good. All right, back down here. And with the thread, I mean, it's, it's up to you. You can use a thread that's a contrasting color. You can make it blend in. You can do whatever the heck you want with it just aesthetically what you want. I'm using a dark gray, um, partially because global pandemic and everybody decided they wanted to sew, I guess, and I couldn't find any black thread. It's ridiculous. All right, so doing the same thing down here. Hopefully I'll be able to edit out all the times I really smacked the crap out of the camera. So carefully bringing it around because I just want to catch that, that very part where I began. And then again, I'm gonna hold my reverse down and I'm gonna backstitch. And then bring it up. And get the scissors. Boop, boop. Okay, I'm gonna set this to the side and once I'm done sewing this other piece, then, you know, well, I'll move the camera back to, to normal land and then we will um, take a look at the stuff. So this here, obviously, don't try to sew over paper clips. Seriously, don't do that. That would be bad. Um, I, I have issues with, I don't even like sewing over pins because I've, I've had a needle every once in a great while. It'll hit that pin just right. And, oh boy, sparks and everything. I scare the crap out of you. And sequins. Sequins are a menace. There we go. Steadying the camera. All right, so with this, again, you've got your pocket um, you don't really need to pin it. I mean, you can, it's called finger pinning when you hold stuff down. You're not working with fabric to fabric necessarily. It's not going to shift too much on you. It might a little bit, but you know, once you get going, you'll be okay. And these are supposed to look kind of random and stuff anyway. So with these, again, I start just a little bit above and this time I'll sew into the fabric and then I'll back stitch up above it and then I'll go one more time. And you go to the end and same thing. I'm going to slow way down and I'm going to stop when it's on the right side. And again, I will show you how that looks. Oh, it's going to be fun. What the hell? Okay. <laughs> I've got, I, I snagged my thread. 
so hopefully it'll there we go pull back up top okay and so when you get to this part go ahead and reline it hold it about you know yeah, keep just keep your fingers out of stuff right um, and hold it down to wherever you're comfortable and then periodically I see it took a bit of that edge over so stop your machine when you do anything where you're next to that needle and straighten it up pull it back out and then I just I continually try to make sure everything stays straight and with this you want to hold it nice and flat here too because you want an even tension because if I sew it and I'm pulling tight what's going to happen is when I do that see how it's lifting that pocket up it'll stay like that so we don't want that we want everything to be nice and even so continue going this way trying to keep my hand out of the camera but still hold this straight that's a joy and again if it wrinkles up on you a little tiny bit it should be fine because you're going to be you know having it go across here that you can't see you got to see my hand you're, you're going to have it here it's going to be folded so it you know hides a multitude of sins that way as well but we keep going and if you have it where it's a little bit longer than your paper don't even sweat it because we'll trim that at the end Okay, just make sure you're catching your fabric onto the paper and if you do have it because mine extends about an eighth of an inch or so away so I just need to pay real close attention to where the end of my paper is not the end of my fabric and I got one more stop it on that right side bring it up and yeah this is a, a joy to try to sew in this tiny little space but okay so make sure again we're laying flat because you want, you know, you don't want this to, if you have it pulled too tight, you're gonna have the same problem. So make sure everything's nice and flat. And we'll do our final side here. So you can see what I'm doing. Hopefully this isn't all for naught. Okay, so go up just past your paper, a couple stitches, reverse and back stitch back. I usually do the back stitch about a half inch into the fabric or so, roughly. All right, so let me pull it this way instead of pulling it directly into the camera. Get more on. Okay, so we are all sewn. So we are back after sewing and after the uh, nausea-inducing me smacking the camera every two seconds. So my apologies. Hopefully, I, I was able to edit most of that out. Um, we'll see, but I'll, I'll definitely have a better sewing setup next time. So it's it's kind of. I mean, you need to be close enough to see what I'm doing, but you don't have to be so close that I'm smacking into it, just turning the piece of paper around. That's not going to be very helpful. So here's what we did. So we have our page here, and we've sewn around it. And this thread blends really well into um, this particular piece, so you're not going to see it. Um, the thread tails. So it depends on what you like. I prefer to trim them. Some people like to leave them. They like to have all the little different threads dangling down. It looks really pretty in there, but you know, on something like this, probably not. Um, maybe on a different page where it was going to be up higher, I'd be okay with it, but same with this here. So we have our page. It's Our cloth is nice and sewn in here, and then we just went around this bottom portion here. So I'm going to go ahead and trim my edges off of this. And as you can see on this side, this is where we had it a little bit longer just so we made sure we went all the way across. So what you're gonna do on that is you're gonna turn this over and you're gonna trim right next to the page here. And you're saying, oh, but you're trimming off all the cute little threads. Ah, but wait, there's more. When you come over this way, you just grab and pick a few of the threads off and it'll, it'll redo that stuff for you. You know, depending on how straight you were, with it, but I mean, it's the edge. Nobody really cares so much about that. It's it's this part that looks pretty, and it's it's still it's going to give you a little bit of tension. But once you fold it, it'll be just fine. Okay, so let's get these back in here. I had grabbed a different one because I knew that it was going to be trouble to um, try to do the one where they weren't attached with me that close to it. So, um, but I will do all of them. The rest of them I'm going to do, you know, off camera, obviously between this and the next video. Um, so you don't have to sit through all of that. But we just put our pages back and I've got these kind of stacked in such a way that I can remember where things go. 
And there we go. So ostensibly, this would be ready to sew into the signature now. You know, let's pretend we had done all the stamping on these pages. This one would be ready, okay? So that's where we're gonna leave it this time. And on the next one, I will have done all of that with this. And then we will go through and I will show you how to sew your signatures in. And that's gonna be its own um, separate video for that. So we'll be going over how to sew the signatures. I uh, do the three hole pamphlet stitch. It's, it's very easy, it's one of the easiest ones. Um, and then we'll put it into the cover. We'll get it glued down in there. We'll do the end papers and then we will be ready to start decorating stuff. So that'll probably take an entire um, episode in and of itself. Um, and then after that, I do want to do one to show you guys how I make these. So we'll see how long that one is. Maybe I'll combine it with some other embellishments and things. But these are just the, the little things I like to make that, that go on the pages as decoration. I usually make a set of them with each journal that I do so that it matches with the scrap fabric that I'm using and the colors and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I stash the extras so every once in a while it comes in handy. And uh, so anyways, we'll go over that and we'll be doing um, all the stuff from the kit because we've got all this, we've got all this to play with. Um, and you know what, actually when we do the sewing in, I may show you, I'm thinking of doing the envelope in the center. So if I do that, um, we'll, we'll go over the envelope on the next one too. So anyways, um, hope you guys enjoyed and uh, see you guys next time. Bye.